I need to improve on multiplayer for my Minecraft clone. My voxel game needs to send data efficiently without dropping packets or have corrupt data. I had many problems working with my voxel engine, that which was decoding of packets from the server. I talked about this in my last video, however I finally solved the issue which I'll explain later. All I can say is that network game programming is a very challenging subject, and I've been stuck on an issue for a while now. I was pretty exhausted until I found that my client wasn't properly handling the data coming from the server which leads to corrupted world generation in my Minecraft clone. Eventually, after doing some research and asking many experienced developers in the Discord communities, they directed me to one research that solved most of my problems. That is, apparently Netty, which I use in my Voxel engine, has a length-based frame decoder. Somebody also told me that Minecraft Java uses this decoder to implement a custom handler for Voxel data packets. That is when I realized that I probably spent too much time trying to handle data streams in multiplayer. After knowing this, it made me think how we can all overcomplicate things, especially when programming a game from scratch. I probably would have uploaded a video if I took only the easy route, but I guess I took the route of pain. Yay! Now here's a recording of the issue before I implemented this feature. So here we have a server light data test from my other computer. So whenever I place a light source, as you can see, it gets updated from the client. Uh, but the only problem is when I break the light source on the server, it looks like it doesn't update correctly. Um, normally it should, but right now, since it's on a different chunk, you can see that if I update the chunk on the client, it leaves like this border behind. But if I place the light source again on the server, it will update on the client just as shown. Moving on with fixing the bugs that I encountered, I decided to work upon the network architecture of multiplayer. Each message that is sent to the server or client has a discrete naming container of data which is called a network packet. This is a common feature for most games like Minecraft Java and is the object that is made of bytes carrying the message across the network connection. Now, in order for us to create a message, we must define a packet. We can think of a packet as being a container that holds information, the voxel game state. First, we define length of message. We can use an integer, depending on size. Next, we need something that can identify the packet, so we use a byte as an ID. Lastly, we have the message content, which is measured by the size so we can cut the frame. Therefore, that pretty much describes a simple packet that we can use for our Minecraft clone. As you can see, as I was designing my voxel engine architecture, I had to come up with a structured network architecture that is event driven. Basically, whenever a request is sent to the client or server, it will activate a callback function, which will execute in a reasonable manner. At first, it was quite the challenge to come up with this, but now getting this through, everything is starting to make sense. All right, so on the left, we have a server running. Um, this is running on a LAN port. I can see that on the server side, you can see the character, of course. And then once the character moves around, it'll send its position to the server. And if I place blocks on the client side, this was an issue with the packets that I mentioned before. The blocks would not update. Now they are updating simultaneously. The block will still update no matter what, even if the client loses a connection temporary. So now the placement and the update of chunks is now synchronized across all clients. Now that we got some of the multiplayer functionality out of the way, I can finally progress in fixing some issues with the voxel game, such as chunk loading and lighting that you may have noticed. Alright, uh, so I wanted to add something unique to my voxel game, and that is a breadth first search queuing system. As you can see, the chunks are loading very quickly near the player. Um, I also do want to make sure that this is on high priority for the chunks that are close. I will also have a render distance, that way the algorithm doesn't go off to existence. As you can see, this is the reason why it's taking a long time. I just need some optimizations. As you can see, there's like these weird holes or misspots where the chunk should be. But if I go over here, it actually says there's data, but 
it's not showing up. Um, you can also see the chunks in the sky being rendered as well. When building voxel games, or perhaps playing your favorite game, it's best to have quality gaming gear. Thanks to Brazer for sponsoring this video. Link in the description. Alright everyone, that wraps up everything in this video. If you want to join our Discord community, link in the description. Have a good one everyone.